Hello, I'm Harry Cliff. I'm a particle physicist and I'm here to talk to you about my new book, How to Make an Apple Pie from Scratch. Now, despite what the title suggests, this is not a cookery book, at least not in the traditional sense. It's actually about what I think is one of the most exciting intellectual adventures that human beings have ever been on. The quest to understand the nature and the origins of matter, the physical stuff that makes up everything in the world around us. It's a story that takes in chemistry, physics, astrophysics and cosmology, drilling down into the basic structure of matter to find the most fundamental ingredients of our universe and then tracing them out through the cosmos, through the hearts of dying stars and ultimately all the way back to the moment of the Big Bang. So what's all this got to do with apple pie, you might very reasonably ask? Well, I've been thinking about this book for a long time, but I spent a long while trying to find the right way into the story. The book contains a lot of fascinating but occasionally quite challenging concepts from the basic ingredients of matter to how stars fuse the chemical elements in their cores and even the physics of what was going on in the universe a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang. And I wanted to find a relatable hook that would help guide readers through the story and also serve as a reminder that no matter how far into the abstract worlds of particle physics and cosmology we get, we're still ultimately talking about the basic physical stuff that makes up the world around us. One day I was walking through Oval Tube Station, which is just around the corner from where I live in, in South London, uh, where they have a whiteboard where they display a thought for the day. Now, sometimes this is a quote from an ancient philosopher, other times it's a line that sounds like it might be from a, a self-help book. But on this particular day, they had a quote up from the great American astrophysicist and science popularizer, Carl Sagan. It was actually a line that Sagan spoke at the start of one of the episodes of the 1980s blockbuster science documentary series, Cosmos. Uh, this particular episode was about the lives of the stars. And at the start of the episode, you find Sagan sitting in a grand oak panel dining hall at the head of a large table. And a, a waiter brings out a freshly baked apple pie and sets it down in front of Carl Sagan. And Sagan, looking rather dapper in one of his signature turtleneck sweaters, turns to camera with a little twinkle in his eye and says, if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Sagan's point is, to understand any object, even one as mundane as an apple pie, you need to be able to trace the origins of its basic ingredients, the atoms inside it, the particles inside those, all the way back through the history of the cosmos, right back to the moment that the universe began. Now, as soon as I saw this quote written on the whiteboard in Oval Tube Station, I was like, right, yes, this is it. This is the way into the story. So the first chapter actually begins in my dad's garage where I do what is probably the silliest scientific experiment I've ever attempted. Uh, we start with a humble Mr. Kipling Bramley apple pie, take a bit off, shove it in a test tube and then heat it to a very high temperature with my dad's old Bunsen burner. And under those high temperatures, we watch as oxygen and hydrogen come off the apple pie and eventually we're left with this blackened lump of carbon. And this is really the jumping off point for a story that attempts to trace the origins of those chemical elements that make up the apple pie as far back through the history of the universe as we can currently go. And the atoms in this humble little apple pie have a truly epic history. The carbon atoms were forged inside huge red giant stars, which our sun will ultimately become in about 4 billion years from now. The oxygen atoms were sprayed into space in violent supernova explosions and the hydrogen atoms themselves were forged about a millionth of a second after the Big Bang from a trillion degree soup of fundamental particles known as quarks and gluons. In the book I tell the stories of scientists from the past who helped to unravel this incredible cosmic history. The chemists who isolated the first chemical elements, physicists who literally tore atoms apart to discover the fundamental ingredients of matter, and the astronomers and astrophysicists who figured out how these particles came together inside stars and in the heat of the Big Bang to forge the atoms that make up everything in the world around us. But as we trace the ingredients of our apple pie further and further back towards the Big Bang, we start to discover gaps in the recipe. And this is where we're forced to confront some of the biggest mysteries in modern science. Now, as I said, I'm a particle physicist, which means I study the most basic building blocks of our universe, fundamental particles. And I do this with thousands of my colleagues using the largest scientific instrument that's ever been built, the Large Hadron Collider. This is a 27 kilometer circumference particle collider buried 100 meters underground outside Geneva in Switzerland. 
And what the LHC does is really, really simple and kind of brutal. It takes uh, subatomic particles called protons, whizzes them round and round and round in a circle, and then smashes them into each other. And by studying these incredibly high energy collisions between these particles, physicists like me try to understand more about the basic ingredients of our universe and also the processes that occurred at the very first moments of the Big Bang. Now the LHC features pretty heavily in this story, not only because it's where I work and quite a lot of the book is told from a sort of first person perspective, including accounts of my memories of being a PhD student back about 12 years ago when the LHC was switching on for the first time, but also because the LHC is trying to answer some of the questions we need to solve if we're ever going to understand the ultimate origins of matter. These are really deep, profound questions like, why does stuff have mass? Why is there matter in the universe at all? And why is it that the laws of physics in our universe seem to be weirdly fine-tuned in order to allow atoms to exist and therefore wobbly flesh-coloured things made of atoms like us? In the book I share some of the highs and lows of working on the world's biggest experiment, including the really exciting moment back in 2012 when thousands of my colleagues at the LHC announced they discovered a particle that we've been searching for for almost half a century the famous Higgs boson. But at the same time, it's also been a slightly nervous time to be a particle physicist. Despite facing some of the deepest and most profound mysteries we've ever faced in fundamental physics, so far at least, the LHC hasn't provided us with any clues that might help us solve some of these mysteries. Now, in the last few years, there have been some intriguing hints coming out of the experiment that I work on, and I talk a bit about what they might be suggesting in the book as well. But I also look to other kinds of science for answers. One of the joys of writing this book has been having the opportunity to travel around the world and meet scientists in their extraordinary workplaces and learn about areas of science outside my own expertise. I describe many of these visits in the book, including this extraordinary visit to a solar observatory, believe it or not, buried a kilometre under an Italian mountain, as well as a visit to a mountaintop astronomical observatory in New Mexico, where astronomers are using light from stars across the Milky Way galaxy to try to unravel the cosmic history of the chemical elements. That experience in particular is one I'll never forget, watching the sun go down over the New Mexican desert as the astronomers opened up this extraordinary telescope and then watching all the stars come out one by one and spending the night with the astronomers stargazing. It was really, really memorable and I, it left me with a healthy dose of career envy. Ultimately, the big question that the book drives towards is, will we ever be able to understand the ultimate origin of the matter that makes up everything in our universe? There are some really, really big mysteries still to solve, but at the same time, science is advancing incredibly rapidly. There are new types of experiments, new types of observatories being built all the time, and we're continually learning more and more about the universe we live in. I won't give the ending away. If you want to know whether I found the ultimate recipe for an apple pie, you'll have to go and read the book. But after writing it, one thing I came away with was this incredible awe, actually, at the fact that this story, this incredible story of the origins of the physical stuff of our universe, which we can now trace back from ordinary everyday objects through the hearts of stars and right back to the Big Bang. This story was ultimately deciphered and unraveled by hundreds of different people, thousands of people, machine builders, theorists, experimenters, all working on their own little bit of the puzzle. And yet somehow they were ultimately all telling the same story, one story, which, as far as I'm concerned at least, is one of the most exciting stories that's ever been told. So thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoy the book as much as I've enjoyed writing it. And just in case you're worried you might feel a little bit shortchanged and you really did want to know how to make an apple pie from scratch, I can tell you that there is actually a recipe right at the very end.